Is your place bland? Are your walls pretty bare? Want some art but don't know where to start? Make your own! Welcome to a design your own poster tutorial where I teach you how to design and print your own poster using Adobe Illustrator. If you're fairly new to Illustrator, I would highly, highly recommend you check out my how to use Illustrator tutorial. But if you're a fairly confident beginner or just want some extra practice, welcome to this tutorial. First thing in poster design, figure out the size of your poster. I normally gravitate towards an 18 by 24, similar to this size right here. I think it's a solid size, but there are other standard sizes like 11 by 17. If you really want a big poster, there's a 24 by 36. Or you can make a custom size, but if you want to frame it, it might be a little bit harder to find a frame. So here I have my width set to 18 inches, my height set to 24 inches, my color mode is set to CMYK, it's a four color process mode, stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and key or black. And we use this in printing just because it creates the most accurate colors possible. RGB mode is mainly for like digital documents and files. For bleed, I have it set to 0.125 inches or an eighth of an inch. A lot of the times people will set up a bleed for the document when it's being printed because printers usually print your design on a big piece of paper and then cut it down. And incorporating a bleed, which is just kind of like extra space that extends beyond your background or your design, helps to avoid having like those white edges around your design when they cut it. Cool, so let's get started. I'm pressing create. For this first poster, I wanted to create something that felt a little bit more like hand-drawn, carefree. We're pulling up our toolbar by going to window, toolbars. I choose the advanced one just because there are a lot of options there. I'm using my pen tool, which is shortcut P on the keyboard, and I'm literally just gonna start drawing letters. I want it to say, I'm rich, because we'll follow it up with copy like, I'm rich in love, I'm rich in sunlight. The idea is just like a poster that expresses a lot of gratitude. So here I am, I'm literally just making the letter I with the pen tool, and like obviously it's supposed to look like hand-drawn and imperfect, so don't really worry about how it looks as long as you can read it and you like the general vibe, great. You can choose how you want your letters to look. Obviously they don't have to look exactly like mine. I'm gonna link some resources for practicing the pen tool down below just because there are some games that you can use that'll help you gain more control, especially if you're doing it on a trackpad like I am. And now we're moving on to the R. Luckily, we only need to draw six letters, otherwise this would be a lot more time consuming. You can even use the same I that you did before. And if you don't feel like drawing this with a pen tool, really fair. Literally just try to find a handwritten font. I will display some on the screen right here to help you out, some Adobe fonts for you. And that'll make this a lot easier. Now, I kind of don't want the letters to just be black. I'm really into bold, saturated colors, so I'm going in and I'm double clicking this fill square. I'm gonna select some vibrant colors to work with. I don't wanna use like a crazy amount of colors. Maybe we'll narrow it down to like red, yellow, green, and blue. So yeah. With CMYK, your colors are not going to be as saturated as they normally are in RGB mode. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. And then feel free to just like judge around the letters and make them even more chaotic for the vibe. Um, I want to put a little hole in this R, so I'm going to just make a little hole with the pen tool. All right, and then I'm going to Window, Pathfinder, selecting both, and then choosing Divide. And then what happens is you get this little shape and you can just direct select with this selection tool, shortcut A on the keyboard, press Delete, and there you have it. You have an R. You can also kind of 
fix up the smoothness of the curve by going to the smooth tool right here and then trying to just smooth it out. That's generally the base of this poster. Um, not too bad. Now we're gonna make a little sun. I like a little sun in the corner. So what I like to do, you can either make a perfect circle by pressing L on the keyboard, which is the ellipse tool, holding shift and dragging down so it's a perfect circle, or I can choose the brush tool, which I prefer to draw with. It's shortcut B on the keyboard, and I'm making it a yellow. And then I'm just drawing a circle on my trackpad. And I'm going to fill it in by just like literally dragging it into that square and it'll fill. Um, I wanna kind of smooth it out. We're gonna be using the smooth tool a lot in this tutorial, so get comfortable with it. But I noticed that there are these lines here and we wanna clean that up and just make it one solid object. So I'm going to window pathfinder again and then uniting it and there it goes. It's one solid object. Then bringing in the smooth tool and smoothing it out. Hmm, okay, and then the sun has some spiky boys to it, so we're gonna add a few spikies. I'm just gonna draw the spiky with my brush tool again. Um, there we have it. Okay, cool. And then we want it to kind of rotate around but we don't want to like individually like arrange it around each one so have this selected press r on your keyboard kind of generally go towards the middle of the sun hold down option and then click and rotate should pop up i want like i don't know seven spiky boys around the sun so i'm gonna go in and type 360 degrees divided by seven we got some math involved um, and then make sure you have the preview button checked so you can see, and then hit copy. And there it is. If you like the way it looks, go ahead and press Command D, and it'll just go around. Yay, easy peasy. I'm gonna group it by selecting everything, going to Object Group, and then holding Shift and dragging down a little bit. And now for the hardest part of the tutorial, I'm gonna draw a cat stretching, basking in the sunlight. And if you cannot draw or you're just a little bit artistically challenged, honestly same, drawing is really, really hard and I get by with a lot of smooth tool and pen tool and refinement, so you're not alone. But the good thing is childlike drawing is really in, so don't worry too much. To make things a little bit easier for ourselves, we're gonna sketch it out. Now I have sketched out some cats and I'm literally just gonna take a picture of this and then airdrop it and then like bring it into my Illustrator file and trace over it. Okay, I'm literally airdropping it right the second. Now we're bringing this guy in. I think I'm gonna go with the first cat on the very top. So I'm gonna crop this image. And I'm gonna press Command 2, and that's gonna lock this image in place so that it doesn't move around. I'm gonna use the brush tool. So we're just gonna trace. It does not have to be perfect, obviously. The vibe of this poster and this tutorial is nothing is perfect. And you don't have to use the brush tool. If that gives you anxiety, you can use the pen tool. Some people find that a lot easier. Um, I just like using the brush tool because it's fun. And I'm gonna fill that shape in. And we have our cat. Yay, we have a cute little cat. And you know what, if drawing is too hard, fair. Literally just take a picture of something that you wanna use, find a picture on the internet, try to use one of those like royalty free sites like Unsplash and practice the pen tool and practice tracing that way. No shame in tracing things when you're starting out. Honestly, no shame in tracing things, period. Just make sure you're not like deliberately, blatantly copying something. Make sure you're adding your own kind of style and spin to it. Cool, and then we're gonna put a face on this guy. I'm going in and it's gonna be white. We're using the brush tool and I'm just gonna go in and 
draw his little face. Okay, this is hard. And then we have the nose and we have the mouth. Okay, cool. This um, stroke is a little bit more than I would like. Maybe we'll make it a 0 0.75 instead. Okay, and then maybe we're gonna make this mouth a little bit smaller. And same with the eyes. And yeah, I'm just playing around with the shape of the head a little bit. But yeah, there we go. See, and now we're almost done. We're literally almost done. Um, now I'm gonna go in and I'm going to say why we're rich, what we're rich in. So I'm gonna choose this pencil tool, shortcut N on the keyboard. Literally gonna just like draw a line that kind of follows the shape of this back. Press the type tool, shortcut T, and write in love. I'm rich in love. And I love this font, Rainy Beanie. It is a Google font, so it's free for everyone. You can just Google it and then download it. And if you want to move it along the curve, just try to find that line at the edge and you can drag it and play around with it. I'm going to write... I'm going to write in confidence. Sometimes the line is just not long enough. It's okay, we can just redo it. In confidence. And then I'm just using the eyedropper tool and pressing I to copy the color. In time. Ugh. Okay, I don't love the spacing of that M and E. I'm just gonna highlight it, press option, and then the backspace on the keyboard and change up the kerning. Okay, cool. And then the last one is in sunlight. Okay, what I like to do also is I can make this line literally bigger and then make the font smaller so that more of the words fit. There we go. And then I'm gonna choose a background. I don't want it to just be white. I prefer to have it be like a cream color. I have my background. I made it using this rectangle tool and just dragging. Then I'm gonna go to object, arrange, send to back. And that is our background now. And I'm just gonna align it over here. I'm just gonna kind of refine the layout, make small changes to the letters, and maybe just like touch up the cat a little bit. Like I want his ears to be a little bit more pointy, so I'm pressing Shift E for the eraser. I'm literally just like erasing the ears. And then I guess going back into the pen tool, I guess the downside to the brush tool is it's hard to get really pointy shapes. Problem here is this guy has a stroke on him, so we're gonna remove the stroke. And that way he's a little bit more crisp. And then it'll be easier for us to add in pointy ears. Making sure that the face is not grouped with the cat. Um, I'm going to unite the tip of the ear with the cat body by highlighting both and pressing Shift M. Then there we have it. We have our cat, and then I'm just gonna smooth, smooth things out a little bit. Same here. Um, make sure it's blue, highlight both, shift M, and then smooth things out. Generally, I just use a lot of the smooth and brush tool. I'm just gonna go in and like make some changes and I don't, it's gonna be kind of boring. So I'll come back and show you the finished product. Here we go, this is the final poster I added in All That Matters and um, now all we have to do is export it. One thing about print is you have to make sure that all of the fonts are outlined and so I'm going to highlight and select all of these fonts and words and go to object, expand appearance, sometimes I have to do it twice, object, expand, press OK and because we hand drew this font, we're good here. Now, typically I like to just save it, file save as a PDF. Um, a lot of 
printers just like to save it as a PDF. You can open it up as an Illustrator file if they have Illustrator, but I'm just gonna title it, I'm rich, and then there we go. We're gonna save it, save PDF, and yeah, there you have it. What I like to do is I will literally just send it to my local print shop. I use Copy Central, but you can use any print shop that says they print posters. This is literally what I wrote in my email. Hi, could I please have this one poster printed on photo satin paper and then in parentheses 18 by 24 inches. Thanks. I chose photo satin paper because I've worked with this print shop before and I usually like to use like photo paper because the illustrations and the designs come out a little bit more glossy and a little bit more saturated. Literally the next day it was ready for pickup. If you're uncertain about the types of paper that your print store uses, you can feel free to ask them and you can even ask like if I want to print this as a poster and I want the colors to come out saturated and glossy, what paper would you recommend using? I feel like an 18 by 24 inch poster usually comes out to like 20 bucks. So it's not like a crazy expensive process, but some print stores differ. Like I've had quotes from other stores and it's been like 30, 40 dollars. And I think it just depends on the type of paper they use and just like how expensive they are in general. So honestly, FedEx. FedEx is really solid too. That is generally how I do my posters. I printed this one at Copy Central as well and came out pretty well. Thank you for watching my tutorial. I hope it helps. I hope it encourages you to create your own poster. And that is that. Thank you so much for watching.